Hello, my name is Ela Asaf from the Archaeology Department of Tel Aviv University and in this short presentation I am going to talk about the Middle Pleistocene site of Kesson Cave in Israel. The site is being excavated since the year of 2000 by Professor Avi Gofer and Professor Ran Barkai from Tel Aviv University. Kesson Cave is located 12 kilometers east to the city of Tel Aviv, as you can see here in the map, and was inhabited during the late Lower Paleolithic period. It was a time of cultural and biological transformations in the Levant, with the emergence of a new local cultural entity known as the Ashelo Yabudian Cultural Complex, which had no counterparts. Chronologically, we are between the Lower Paleolithic Ashelian and Middle Paleolithic Musterian. Here you can see a scheme that briefly summarizes the chronology, stratigraphy, hominin species, lithic and faunal assemblages of the Paleolithic Levant, and the main differences between the Lower and Middle Paleolithic cultures. So the Ashelo Yabudian is in between, dated to 400 to 200,000 years ago, and Kesson Cave has been assigned to this cultural complex consisting only of Ashelo Yabudian layers. After nearly two decades of research, we can say that Kesson Cave is a treasure box of innovations. Uh, in a nutshell, its main findings reflect the habitual use of fire and the construction of central hearth, meat roasting and hearth-centered activities, new patterns of meat sharing and bone marrow storage of medium-sized ungulates, flint procurement from deep underground sources by quarrying, the production and use of kina scrapers, systematic and predetermined blade production technologies, systematic flint and bone recycling. So the only anchor to the Ashelian is the infrequent production and use of bifaces. So here we see Kesson Cave situated on the southern slopes of the Sumerian Hills. This is how it looked in the year of 2000 when the cave was discovered during the construction of a road after an explosion. Various dating methods suggested human occupation at the cave started at around 420,000 years ago and ended at prior to 200,000 years ago. 11 meters of archaeological layers were excavated so far. The stratigraphic sequence of the cave was divided into two. So we have the lower part deposited while the karstic chamber was closed and the upper part deposited when the cave was more open. The cave yielded strong evidence for habitual use of fire, in particular wood ash remains and the abundance of burnt bones. A large hearth was identified, which had been repeatedly used and was the focus of human activities as early as 300,000 years ago. The hearth exhibits two superimposed use cycles, each comprising shorter episodes of use and it covers an area of 4 square meters. The lithic assemblage of the cave includes hundreds of thousands of items attributed to two of the three lithic industries characterizing the Ashelo Yabudian cultural complex. So we see the systematic production of blades characterizing the Abudian industry and large-scale production of kina and demi-kina scrapers characterizing the Abudian industry. And we have few single hand axes as well. A study focusing on the density and spatial distribution of lithic assemblages at the cave, supported by a reconstruction of hearth-centered activities, are strongly in favor of behavioral spatial patterning at the cave. Based on measuring the cosmogenic isotope beryllium-10, it was shown that some of the flint at Kesson Cave was quarried and used for specific purposes, such as hand axe and scraper production while other materials were collected from secondary sources. An ongoing study indicates the use of a variety of flint types from sources around the cave and farther afield, up to 30 kilometers. The cave's inhabitants were familiar with several different flint sources, quarried flint for specific purposes, and brought a large array of flint stones to the cave. One of the most prominent features is the intensive and systematic production of blades in the cave, following an efficient, innovative, and thoughtful technology with strict standards. These were shared at two additional Ashelo Yabudian key sites, Tabun Cave and Yabud. 
we also see the noticeable presence of ahead of their time Kina scrapers. And the phenomenon of flint recycling is a repetitive planned behavior practiced in all areas of the cave, both in Yabrudian and Amudian contexts, and under different modes. So one of these modes is the collection of old discarded flakes or tools to produce new small sharp items. Used where residue analyses and experiments show that these items were mainly used for cutting soft materials, meaning meat. The cave inhabitants hunted mainly prime aged fallow deers and carried selected body parts, the most nutritious ones, into the cave. Patterns of meat sharing were also identified based on the presence of selected high quality body parts of hunted ondulates, which indicate their transportation to the cave and later consumption there, including roasting and marrow extraction. Delayed consumption is also reflected in dry skin removal patterns observed on ongulates bones from which marrow was finally extracted. A recent study indicated that one of the ways to extract the marrow was using shaped stone balls made of carbonatic rocks. These were probably uh, not produced on site, but selected and collected from outside the cave due to their morphological features. We have 30 stone balls uh, found so far, all dated to early than 300,000 years ago, and user and residue analysis indicate that 10 of these items bear abundant bone and fat residues. So the Kesson people had a very large toolkit. Moreover, these people had a rich cultural world, as indicated by cut marks found on swan's wing bones. These suggested that swan feathers were extracted by the cave's inhabitants and indicate about some sort of human-bird interaction and about the cosmological world of these people. It seems that the Kesson people had complex relations with the landscape surrounding them in general, as perhaps evident by the high percentage of sometimes fully patinated and other items that were selected and brought into the cave from outside, including hand axes, spheroids, patinated scrapers and other blanks, as well as small colorful pebbles. This behavior may have been the result of different factors, including the suitability of specific ready-made morphologies, the aesthetic characteristics of the flint, and the fact that the discarded tools may have been a means through which our ancestors have perceived the past of their predecessors, according to an ontological cosmological perspective. So we see here a vast array of behavioral patterns practiced throughout the 200,000 years of the cave's occupancy, which had to be learned and assimilated. The identification of these learning processes is, of course, challenging, but a study focusing on the lithics of Kesem indicated special patterns reflecting different skill levels at the site. The study mainly focused on lithic cores, and the identification of high versus low skill levels of napping reflected on them in different locations within the cave. The results showed that various learning mechanisms were applied in Kesem, including trial and error mechanisms, but also sharing of information between group members. The fireplace, in particular, seems to have been a focal point around which learning processes related to blade production were practiced intensively through a sharing system of cores emphasizing the connection between social learning and innovations. So who were these people inhabiting the Kesson cave? We have 13 human teeth found so far, indicating that the hominins inhabiting the cave were not Homo erectus, but rather more similar to later modern populations of this region, while also exhibiting some Neanderthal affinities. So it's a new hominin lineage. It has been suggested that dietary stress caused by the disappearance of elephants triggered the replacement of Homo erectus, a hominin highly dependent on consuming large animals, by a new hominin lineage that was better adapted to hunting larger numbers of smaller and faster animals in order to provide sufficient caloric intake to compensate for the loss of the elephants. The biological replacement took place in tandem with significant cultural changes embodied in a new, unique and innovative local culture complex in the Levant. It is our contention that the appearance of a new creative set of behaviors in the Levant 
some 400,000 years ago, must have been accompanied by innovative cultural transmission mechanisms of a different nature than those practiced during earlier Lower Paleolithic times, playing a significant role in the adoption and assimilation of these new practices. New hunting methods, meat sharing, flint procurement and flint production strategies, as well as the earliest habitual use of fire. All the information is presented in much more detail in various papers, and you can check out this partial bibliographic list, and of course contact us for any question. We would like to thank the foundations that support the Kesson Cave Research Project over the years, and thank you for your attention.